I'm Chubba Chada, contributing editor to Car and Driver, here with Hell Kitty, our 1988 Honda Prelude that we've been campaigning in lemons racing for the past three years, even though it has 267,000 miles on it. Now, I'm one of the co-owners of this car. Don Sherman, technical director of Car and Driver, is another co-owner. And the third one is Tony Swan, another Car and Driver contributor who's not here today for this video. We've been racing this car successfully for a number of years, but for the 2013 season, we wanted to make a key upgrade, and that was to install a fuel cell. And a few other things. Uh, Lemons Racing is evolving. It's getting more competitive. It's also getting safer. The day is going to come when uh, fuel cell is required equipment. We want to be ahead of that curve. So to address those two issues, we did it over the winter before the season began. And there, the two issues are pretty simple. The existing fuel tank was working fine, wasn't leaking, we had no problems with it, but we didn't have quite enough capacity. We want to be able to go about two hours per stint in the car, and we weren't getting that, and we're not sure if it didn't have enough capacity or the pickup was in the wrong spot, but one way to fix that was to put in a higher capacity fuel cell, and it would make the car safer as well. The rules allow up to 24 gallons. We were running before with 15.9 plus a fuel tank that had a big dent in the bottom. So let's say 15 for round figures. Changing to a fuel cell uh, upped capacity by more than 50% and obviously range by that same amount. So that's going to make us more competitive. Fewer stops to refuel and uh, more racing. So let's take a look at what was involved in installing a fuel cell in this car. Now this is an ATL 100 series supercell and basically the way it operates is like all these fuel cells do. This aluminum can isn't really what holds the gasoline. What that does is contain a thick, very durable rubber bladder and that's what actually contains the gasoline. And then that bladder is filled with foam to make sure that the fuel doesn't slosh around all over the place. The fuel pickup is near the back and that means that under all circumstances we're going to have fuel at that pickup and we'll probably be able to use just about all that 24 gallon capacity. Exactly. Uh, ATL offers a device called a black box which is a small box with trap doors that you mount inside the fuel cell at the back center and it's like a mouse trap where the mice go in but they don't come out. In this case the fuel goes in and it comes out only through the pump, filter, line uh, to the engine. So that helps you draw every last increment of fuel uh, and it works well with cornering and braking and accelerating of course. When we're considering uh, preparation for 2013 and considering the move to a fuel cell, naturally we gave ATL top consideration for a number of reasons. First of all, they're a sponsor of Lemons. The uh, Lemons organization actually sells ATL cells at discount uh, to competitors. Another reason is we had prior experience with them. Years ago we raced uh, Mazda and BF Goodrich road racing that had an ATL cell that worked very well. We put one in a twin engine Honda CRX we built in the 80s. So ATL is the preeminent manufacturer for cells. They've been in business for 40 some years. I think they're the largest in the world. So we quickly uh, zoomed in on, on what they had to offer. Now they had a number of fuel cells available for us and we kind of had to look at the configuration of the car and decide which one to go with because we wanted the 24 gallon capacity but we also wanted the fuel cell to be as low as possible in the car because we don't want to raise the center of gravity. We also wanted it to be a little bit forward so that if someone dented us in the back it wouldn't instantly hit the fuel cell. So after perusing their available options we came up with this 24 gallon rectangular one that more or less fits in the spare tire well. That's why you see it being angled. The back part is pretty low in the spare tire well, and then it goes up out of there. And we also thought about the location of that pickup. Clearly the low spot is in the back, and that's where we wanted the pickup. And furthermore, we wanted the pickup there because under acceleration, whatever motion of the fuel there's going to be, it's going to be towards the back of the fuel cell, which is where we need it. Now under braking, the fuel's going to rush forward perhaps, but we're not using a lot of fuel under braking, and so the right location for that pickup is near the back of the fuel cell. This barely fits getting uh the can that holds the bladder uh, for the cell in through this opening, no small feat. 
it uh, went in with minimal clearance and it actually took a little compression to get it in place, but this cell is in, the, in its home. It's uh, where it best fits. It's as far forward as it can possibly be. It fits the well very nicely. And uh, we made some brackets and, and things to secure it in place. Yeah, once we decided where to put the fuel cell, then we had to figure out a way to mount it securely to the car. The rules require that it be mounted securely to the car, and the last thing we want is to get into a crash and have this cell that might have 200 pounds of gas in it come bang us in the head. So what we did was we got some uh, eighth inch thick steel angle, and we basically made a picture frame for the bottom. I've got a MIG welder, so we chopped it to pieces. Uh, we, we, we welded it together, so that ho securely holds the bottom of the can. And that lower picture frame is bolted right through the sheet metal uh, very s firmly to the car. And then we made an upper picture frame that secures the top of the fuel cell. And basically, these vertical tie rods, and we have six of them going all the way around, that ties these upper and lower picture frame together so the fuel cell is securely captured and bolted very solidly to the car. Yes, that's a one and a half inch wide uh, steel angle, plus those six retention straps uh, top to bottom, plus two uh, lateral pieces across the top. So it's not going to go anywhere. The cell itself is held by a 42 thousandths inch aluminum can that's uh, light and uh, also very secure. The bladder is inside that. Everything going in or out of the fuel cell goes through this aluminum center plate which is attached to the bladder itself with a whole bunch of screws. This is the power connection to the electric pump. It's a 100 psi pump inside the black box that uh, delivers fuel out. This is the pressure line that goes to the stock Honda fuel injection system. Here's the return line. After the, the regulator up front, fuel comes back at a lower pressure back to the cell. This is the level sensor. You have to feed it power in a ground, plus uh, there's an electrical signal that comes out of that that goes forward to run the gauge. This third AN connection and uh, braided hose is the vent line. When you draw fuel out, we have a sealed cap at the top, so air has to go in to replace that volume. And so we have a line that comes up out of the cell, loops high, and goes overboard to uh, let air back in the fuel cell. Of course, you have to refuel the cell uh, periodically. It's 24 gallons, but you consume a lot more than that during the race. So we wanted to relocate the fuel filler point from the side of the car that filled the original stock tank to the rear of the car. And we built this hose that pierces the deck lid and there's a cap there. So when we refuel, we don't have to open the deck lid at all. We take the cap off, we bring a five gallon dump can, tip it up there. It's a can that uh, won't drip until you depress the nozzle on it. It delivers the fuel straight down. That's gonna make it as expedient as possible, the fastest possible delivery way better than a horizontal type uh, can in through the side of the vehicle. After we're fueled, you put the cap on and you go. Like I said, you don't have to open the deck lid to refuel. And hopefully with this setup, we'll easily be able to go two hours a shift. And the way the Lemons races are set up is there's typically not much more than eight hours of racing per day. So we've got four drivers on a team. If we've got eight hours of uh, driving per day and we can go at least two hours, that means everyone gets a full two hour stint, no extra pit stops, and that should help us in the standings. One of the key uh, changes to the car for the 2013 season is a fuel gauge, which is part of the cell. There's a sensor inside that drives this uh, gauge right here. And when we power up, it gives us an accurate reading so we know uh, when it's time to refuel. One of the other changes we made was to relocate the battery. When you think uh, a 40 pound object, a lead acid battery, over the front wheels moved all the way back here, that's a very substantial change in weight distribution that should also help the competitiveness of the car. Our first race is at Gingerman in Western Michigan in mid-April. We'll find out if all these modifications really do pay off on the track. We'll see you on the winner's podium. <laughs>